Welcome to the 359. I'm Ben Fox Rubin. I'm Scott Stein. The iPhone 10R reviews are out, and we've got Scott here to walk us through the new device. Let me just read off some quotes from your review. Sure. You're probably not going to miss any of the stuff in the iPhone 10S that the the iPhone 10S brings to the table. This is my favorite iPhone probably in years and last. I think this is the one to get. So let's start with your overall impressions. That was obviously very positive. Yeah, it was because I think, well, Apple makes a lot of iPhones, too many iPhones, and I think that it's hard to make a decision. I think you often get tempted by the step-up models, and that's happened since the Plus phones have been here and the dual cameras. I think Apple did a lot more to make what is now their entry-level phone, albeit still an expensive 750. 750, yeah. But they've done a lot more to make that uh, an attractive pick, and I don't think that those step-up features are really as a step up unless you're really, really into some of those fine details. I don't think most people won't be. So let's talk about some of the things that you would be missing, getting the 10R as opposed to the 10S or the 10S Max. Uh, Dual camera. There's no dual camera. No. There's also the body is what? It's like steel. It's aluminum instead of steel. Aluminum instead of steel. It's like steel started being, uh, you know, the the, the iPhone models for a couple of years now have been aluminum, but the tanners are are steel. And then the last thing is the screen, which is an LCD versus an OLED. Let's dive into that one first. Are people really going to notice a difference between an LCD versus an OLED? You, you did a lot of comparisons there. Yeah, we did a lot. And um, I had some help with that, too. And, and if you look at them side by side, you definitely see that the OLED is better. Absolutely. Black levels, um, some, some color tone in some instances. It can look a bit brighter, although the display nits are the same. Uh, the... Display, however, on its own looks great. And I think that's the important thing to, to point out is if you're just looking at it as an iPhone. And you're not doing a, a review. <laughs> right. If you're, and if you're coming to it from a you know an iPhone 8, iPhone 7, it looks great. And I think the extra real estate there really matters. Now, it's technically lower resolution than the 10s Max, but that resolution is an area that I don't think the eye can really perceive. It's at the same resolution that the 8's been at, that kind of retina display level. And... It looks great. Apps have mapped really well to it. I haven't found any that don't work well. It's a tweener size, so it's a little smaller than the Max, which I actually like because I found that those Plus phones are a little too wide, and I feel like this is a a more manageable, larger phone. Let's talk about the camera, too. So you're not getting the dual camera. Were there any issues or problems? I guess the one thing that you noticed was that, what was it, the Pixel 3 XL takes better pet shots. It takes if better really, pet shots, and it takes s- some better uh, better frame portrait shots. Uh, yeah, I think, you know, Pixel 3 takes fantastic photos. The um, I wanted to compare because it it's also single lens. Apple included a portrait mode with the single lens. So it actually does okay. It never failed me on people, but it's only designed to work with people. So And it's also a wide angle. So as I say in the review, it's a very different type of portrait shot than the telephoto one on the 10s. Things are just farther away, so you have to get closer to subjects. It kind of feels more subtle, so I don't... And I'm not a big portrait mode user anyhow, mm. but I do like 2x zoom. I like the ability to get a little bit closer, especially for close-ups of things. For when I work at looking hands-on and things like that, I use that. Um, so I think lacking that, it, it's a shame, but I think you can do enough with this phone Everything else from the front-facing camera to the other features, wide angle, are the same as the 10s, And so it, generally, it looks great. So ultimately, hold on to your money. You're better off getting a 10R. If you are an Apple customer, you're better off getting a 10R than a 10s. Probably like a 10s Max if you really want a really big phone. I guess you would be in the market for that, though. The Max to me is just so in, in, a, in, a, in a rarefied zone with price that I, I, it's not something to me that is a normal. That's a price is no object pick. Yeah. To me, this is like the battery life is the best of them. So that matters the most to me. It matters the most to a lot of people. Uh, you know, saving a couple hundred dollars or more uh, is not insignificant. And sure, the phones can be even more affordable than this. Like this is what the I've top iPhone top iPhone used to be seven fifty, but I think that's that's the area I would accept for for a new generation phone. And I feel a lot more comfortable making the leap into this. I think it's really fast. It's got all the stuff that I would use. Sure. Uh, also, we wanted to plug our ongoing series online about rural broadband and also five G. Please give them a read if you get a chance. Uh, If you want to read more about these stories, check us out on CNET. I'm Ben Fox Rubin. I'm Scott Stein. Thanks for watching.
All right, thanks everybody for joining us for the recording of the audio podcast that we'll publish later today. You can find links on how to describe to that down in the description below. But for now, we're going to jump into the chat and take out your questions and comments in regards to the iPhone 10 XRS Max Nano. Oh, come on. You know the name. I do not, and I don't care. You're just naming next year's phone model. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> That's the sad part. Okay, so right out the gate, uh, let's let's put the, the bias and negativity aside. Present company included. Let's get objective, Scott. Uh, okay. DeMonte says, I feel like they could have knocked that price down to 600 in my opinion. Of course That's they could have. That's not objective, but like, what do you think about that? They could have knocked the price down. I think, uh, however... I had a, a much less positive feeling about where the iPhone 8 fit in the lineup last year compared to the iPhone 10 mm. than I do th- with the iPhone 10R compared to the 10s and the 10s Max. So that's what I was looking at. I mean, this to me includes most of the stuff that I will be talking about the design of the 10 about. I don't think you're missing any of the other stuff. And yeah, I would love to see them make a more affordable iPhone. I think the SE should come back. Mm. And I think that you know there's a, they 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 fill that hole with older iPhones right now, so. But if I was recommending, look, a lot of the other phones in the landscape are at seven hundred, eight hundred dollars now. A lot of those phones that it's competing with are right in that zone. So I don't think it really is all that expensive compared to the competition anymore. Now also, I think they all could get also, less expensive. The iPhone's but, starting price yeah. has generally been six hundred and fifty dollars for years. So yes. to suggest 600 I think might be a little aggressive, but 650 it would have been nice, but I understand that due to inflation, due to the fact that this is years later and they're also pushing up the price of their iPhones well past $1000, you don't want to um set a price so low that you're basically killing off the sales for your, for your higher priced items. I mean like granted if you're buying the Max as yeah. you said, it's a money is no object type of situation. So you're buying that one regardless. But um, you want to you want to price it close enough to the 10s that at least people give the 10s a real chance. Like they they at least give it some consideration. Yeah, there's a whole. I mean, there's a spectrum. You look at all those phones right now, and everything is like a hundred dollars, hundred dollars, up, 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 and that's always been the case. I think this is the landing point at this point with the lineup where I would say I go to this. I wouldn't necessarily go lower or higher. It also depends on what you want to have a phone. I mean, Mm -hmm. I'm also if you're not looking for a a more advanced phone and you want something that just functions, there are many other options in iPhone land and outside of it. So before I forget, so you have the 10S with you and the 10R with you. Yeah. Let's do the LCD versus the OLED comparison. Yeah. We did this ahead of the show. So you have the same brightness set up. You have the same background. And um, let's let's just show folks that are watching this whether they can actually see the difference between sure. the these two. Obviously, the OLED is supposed to be better and more expensive uh, uh, type of display. So those are the two phones. Admittedly, this is just the home screen. But in my review, we also look at a bunch of stuff. Same wallpaper, max brightness. You can see differences between these outside of even the screen. Uh, To me, even though these are both uh, rated as the same brightness, I see that the OLED, hold on a sec, see the OLED seems brighter. Uh, and that could be as much a factor of contrast or the way it's handling color, but it seems a more, a little more vivid, brighter. Um, it definitely seems much more vivid when watching things like a movie like Blade Runner 2049. When I was watching that, you could see, you know, you look at a jacket and you can make out a lot more detail on the OLED in, in like a dark type scene. It's like televisions, um, where you're looking at uh, a high end OLED versus a, 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 a capable LCD, but the point is that when I use this on, for everyday purposes, for reading, for movies, games, I mean, I just did as much stuff on it as I could. It was perfectly fine. Yeah. Um, I, I would also like to congratulate yeah. uh, BVG, who was an on-the-fly cameraman just now behind the scenes. So I do it well, all, baby. Well I do it done. all. <laughs> he really does. I mean, I love I love the way the OLED looks on the phone, but I do not love $1,000 phones, a uh, $1,000 phone. And uh, and and probably more because you're going to upgrade to mm-hmm. more storage than the 64. So it's like suddenly you're, it it is serious laptop land. And I just think at some point, starting now, the phone prices have to start becoming more reasonable. And to me, that that 10R is is an acknowledgement of that. It's not the complete answer, but it's the best answer for now. 
Uh, for, also, for an iPhone. Obviously, Apple had a year's worth of sales data to look at to say, here's how our $1,000 phone sold last year. Yeah. And they clearly understood that if they're not going to have like an iPhone 8 style phone to, to kind of have people fall back on, we need something like this. Yeah. Because otherwise we're going to lose a bunch of customers that don't want to pay $1,000. So it's nice to hear that this is, this is a nice more value or more budget option, even though it's Apple style budget. So, yeah. Well, I think it's like, it, you know, you'll notice the OLED, but, it, you know, it, it's foolish to say, like, if I go to somebody and I have asking uh, anyone just like sort of like what what you think of this other display and I try to point out the differences between OLED and LCD, I end up looking pretty silly because I'm po I'm pointing out these really <laughs> fine tuned things that people don't really care about, especially on a smaller screen. Right. Sure. And so I can perceive them, but like, what would the value be to somebody to say you're going to spend up to get that? Probably that group is pretty small, and mm. you probably know who you are. So then go for it. That's what Apple's. That's the whole proposition is to say, okay, this OLED is here. But what's nice is it's not a key feature anymore. I don't think it's a key feature. I think the more missing key feature is the 2x zoom, mm. which I have realized the optical zoom is something I use more often than not, and also can affect things like, you know, if you use digital zoom to 5x versus digital zoom at 5x on the 10s, the pictures come out much sharper. I had an example of that in the review. They come out much sharper on the 10s because it's also taking advantage of some of that optical zoom. And so that matters, you know, like that's the stuff. And also like if I'm taking a picture of somebody, I don't want to have to get so close to them for portrait mode where it's uncomfortable, which it kind of is with the 10R where you're, you're basically, you're kind of doing this basically to get. Basically kissing them. Yes. Yeah. Like, I mean, here, I'll take a picture of you with it. Um, okay. Let's, let's take a picture of you with this in portrait mode. And it only recognizes people. So pet shots, forget about it. Any other objects, forget about it. It's trained for just faces. So, I mean, that's okay. I'm not too close to you, but. But I'm like not too, I'm not like casually far away. I mean, I mean, it's a little uncomfortable. Right. If I do this. That's normal. Yeah, but you're you're really far away from me right now. So there's the picture of you there. Okay. Yeah. That's a nice I look, picture. I would hardly call I look it a pretty portrait. Sad. Right. But it doesn't look like a portrait. It just looks like a, a nice, sad photo of Ben. I, I look and I look unhappy about something, but you sure. You look like a magician there with the, Thank with the you. backdrop. Yes. And then there's the picture of you. Which, which I think of as like a, a more normal frame. Yeah, that's that's my get that camera out of my face look. <laughs> You're like, yeah. Scott, don't get any closer. <laughs> right. right. And and also the the face ends up a little more distorted. No offense, but you know what I mean? Like Oh yeah, yeah. No, angle, I look hideous. You get you get like a weird <laughs> wide angle face. Um, which sometimes people like for a photo. Where you know you're kind of like a little more thinned or stretched out, uh, <laughs> my nose sticks out more, and type of things like that. But I, I don't, I, I, I really like the composition on the 10s. But the other thing I thought was interesting, if you want to really hold on, get into hold it, on, yeah, we need to get to more questions. Yeah, 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 I was just hold that say thought. That, guys. There's a lot to talk about. There okay. is a lot to talk, let's talk about. about more but but let's talk about I want to give the audience a chance to, to talk about. In. Like, yeah. uh, for instance, we got a familiar name in the chat today. Stephen Shankland says, hey. "Does the iPhone 10R have the same radio technology as the iPhone 10s and 10s Max?" Thank you. Good, good thing to address there. Um, carriers and bands. So as far as like carrier support. It does not have gigabit LTE. So these are two mm -hmm. important things to think about. Gigabit LTE is not available in all markets, but it's not 5G, but it should offer faster throughput. I still had 230 megabits per second on Verizon in my very suburban near New York town of Montclair. So that was great. Uh, it doesn't have 4x4 MIMO. It has 2x2 MIMO. Now, like that, that technology is to allow, uh, to allow you to get a signal maybe on the edge of networks to be able to get stronger um, connections. Um, it, it's useful technology that it, it's the amount of, um, antenna connections that allow you to kind of like lock onto the signal and get, get a little more out of it. Um, four by four is on the iPhone 10 S and the 10 S max. It's two by two on the iPhone eight, eight plus slightly less, but you're R. probably not going to notice unless you're in the woods. Here's the thing. If you've had a previous iPhone and you've been fine, that's what you can expect here. Um, I didn't notice any radical improvement using the 10s in in the very spotty networks of commuting New Jersey. So I can't say that like between using one or the other, I noticed like a, a night and day. Mm. There need to be a lot more tests with this, but that's something to consider. Well, the other thing that Shanklin may have been pointing to is also the um, 
the chip itself. So not the processor, but the radio chip. And I believe they're all Intel this year. Yes. So Qualcomm got booted. There's yeah. there's this whole lawsuit going on between Apple and Qualcomm right now. And Intel is in the expensive ones. It's in the cheaper one. That's And I can't imagine it really feels any differently because it's all basically the same chip anyway. So, I mean, in, in a week so far, it, it doesn't seem like, again, as, as a recommendable thing to go for the upgraded 4x4 MIMO gigabit, I, I didn't perceive anything, but there's a lot more things you need to perceive in order to say, like, maybe this matters for you. Mm. But again, I think it's kind of, we have it in the review, it's 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 another it's another one of the elements. So it was like durability of glass, but we need to do drop tests with it. Mm. Uh, another question? Oh, yeah, let's keep it moving. Uh, we only got about six minutes, seven minutes left. Uh-oh. Uh, Sinjoy says, LCD is fine, but how can you justify 720p in 2018? Good question. Well... It is a good question. Um, to me, like anything I watched on it looked perfectly fine. I mean, the- speaking of, uh, can you specify how 1080p video, specifically like YouTube videos or something, yeah. perform on it? Everything looked great, and we, I, I went, I, you know, we looked at this with people who review televisions. We looked at this with like uh, other people in the office. Um, so I thought it looked perfectly fine. If you want a 1080p display. Yes, that's what the 8 Plus is for. That's what the 10s and others can offer. Um, the resolution to me never was a factor. And that's all I can say about it. So I think, you know, it's it's something that makes sense. But if, at the distance that you're looking at from a phone, uh, it, it doesn't matter. Again, did it matter to anybody when you're using the iPhone 8? So um, it, it, it works really well for me. That and is a I good really point. tried to throw as much as, as much as like everyday apps, games, videos as I could, reading, web surfing. It's, it's, I was just trying to like see the limitations of this 6.1 inch screen and I, I didn't perceive them. You remember when Apple yeah. came out with a 5K uh, display for one of their desktop computers, right? Yeah. We had that in one of the labs. I had to, I'm very nearsighted. I had to take my glasses off and look at it this close to be able to see a perceivable difference in like the dots and whatever. Yeah. And that's on that's on a desktop display. So there is something to be said about, okay, the number is bigger, but are you really gonna notice? So I, I appreciate what you said. Yeah, I think Apple was on this originally with retina display and pixel density. I think I, I kind of lost Apple a bit when they started getting the super retina because I feel like, you know, the whole original idea was that how many pixels can your eye really perceive? I think that's kind of the main takeaway in, in the end for a lot of these. The, Eleven. Ex- yeah, 11 pixels. Extra pixels for me always mattered for like phone VR. That was like the most important use case for a uh, right, like super high density. Right, right up against your face. Yeah, like a Gear VR with a Samsung phone. Yeah. All, All right, right, more questions. Moving along, under the five minute mark. Uh, how, let's talk camera. Is the zoom on the 10R good? Uh, 10S zoomed photos are better than the pixels. Uh, I don't know, I got to cut off. Uh, well, I would like to see a comparison of the zoom on the 10R and the pixel. Oh, between those two, that would be good. Um, you know, looking at it, and the Pixel has an ability to maximize digital zoom that's superior. So um, we're going to do a lot of camera comparisons with that. But, you know, Google is doing more interesting things computationally with what it can do with a single lens. Apple's just beginning, and I think there's a lot of work to do with that. Um, digital zoom is just like it was before. So if you had an iPhone 8, 8 Plus, it's the same thing, which is that I kind of would prefer not using it. If I have to, I would go to 2x digital zoom and it's serviceable sharing in a photo. 5x zoom is not at all serviceable. 5x is basically like a grainy mess. It's grainy and, and not nice. But like a 2x zoom, you could share that in a tweet. Now, like, would you, you know, for things you want to frame on a wall, you shouldn't do any digital zoom. But um, that's why not having the optical is, is kind of a little bit of a, a loss there. But it ends up being on an everyday basis, not necessarily a big thing for everyone. But it's the biggest key difference on this phone. Uh, would you say that that difference is enough to justify upgrading from the 10 to the 10R? To the if you to the if 10, you take to a ton 10S? of photos, it, it really depends on the customer. Yeah, like the 10R if is you, 10S. If you really, if that's something that matters a lot to you, yeah, and it's worth two hundred dollars plus, then then yeah, like if you really want to take photos and you have a reason to have that opt, you know, yeah. like an increased zoom. But I think, correct me if I'm wrong here, but like according to your review, um, it's very hard to justify that increased price for most customers. 
for yeah. a lot of customers. I think you're already kind of like there's a lot of nickel and diming on on like price increases and things like that, like steel watches and other things. So I feel like you know getting to like the basics of what the phone needs is a nice thing. Um, but if you're a pro phone, a pro phone person, a pro photographer person who uses a phone, why well, those people? There are very few of them. But there are very few. Not according but, to them. Yeah, but you know okay. what? I think about people who are shooting movies on phones, who are doing uh, like you know sports and other things where they're using their phone as their main thing, or you're uh, you're someone who's YouTubing or doing all sorts of stuff, stuff that you're really using that phone in, in a professional way. Um, then yeah, the upgrade's gonna matter, and that won't that cost won't be a matter a factor for you because no, it's, because your because your videos are gonna right. look much much more professional. People buy thousands of dollars of camera equipment, so I mean yeah, so an extra two hundred fifty dollars, whatever, forget it. Like just get the nicer uh, camera because the 10s is a step up with that, both in, and also in display. So if you're looking to like have the most perfect representation of something, if you need to view something, edit it, etc. Yeah, go for that. That's what that display is for. But I'm just saying a lot of people, it, it's like the MacBook Pro is a lot of people are paying up for tech that they're probably not using. And that what's much more important for me is performance, basic camera quality in the in the ISP and all that, and battery life. Mm -hmm. So attending to those uh, versus those others. But yeah, I would say you get you would get the 10s or the 10s Max. All right, we are down to the wire. It's time to say goodbye, but before we do that, closing thoughts. Uh, Storm King says what we're all thinking, these phones seem like a pit stop until next year, a big wait-and-see situation. Mm. No it's comment. I feel like we've been living in that era for some time now. No. Uh, Ten years. You know, they Oof. are a pit stop in some way. I, I think we're getting to the point with phones that short of a folding phone or some, you know, that type of technology, which... Again, if Apple does that, it might be much later than other companies introduce, so that wouldn't be next year. Um, but Samsung may do it. Samsung may very do it. Soon. Samsung often, yeah, will will lead the pack with that. But I'm saying if you're an iPhone person waiting for a new design, Apple just did the 10, and I think they're going to be sitting tight on that design. That's what they do. They sit tight on a design for a while. So I think next year you're going to be looking at maybe some other design iteration. Um but I wouldn't expect anything really dramatic with it. I think this is kind of, this is the form. Uh, yeah, so and if you, they are iterative, but that's kind of what you get each very year. Very slowly iterative. Yeah, yeah. They, they they do take their time with things. And uh, going back to the commenter that said, I'd prefer this closer to $600. I guess if you hold your breath until next year, maybe the 10R will still be available and they'll cut the price by a hundred bucks because that is, yeah, you know, how, how they do pricing. I don't yeah. know if you're really willing to wait a year, but that is an idea. Yeah, to be clear, if you have another phone, you're fine waiting right now. And and that's and that more often is the case. I think as these phones get to, to cost like as much as laptops, you should be waiting a bunch of years. Maybe You shouldn't even, upgrade every two years. Right. I think it's getting to the point you should wait a, a number of years. It's not a one year or two year uh, upgrade. So if you have an iPhone 8, yeah, stay put. I mean, if you have an upgrade path that somebody's offering you a way to upgrade, this is something you should take note of. But I'm thinking of this as like a years old thing where you've been eyeing an upgrade for a while and you're thinking about landing on an iPhone, I think this is a good one to land on. Yeah, good point. Uh, All right, we okay. are down out of time. We are living in the era of premium phones from the Pixel to the 10s to the 10s Max to the 10R to the 10P to the 10M. I, I'm, I'm, I'm cooked. Uh, so final thought, uh, we see a lot of action going on with the 10R. We see a great camera, but can the 10R see why kids love the taste of Cinnamon Toast Crunch? Yes. Sure. Of course it can. What do you think you're paying for, after all? This comes with sugar, sugar crispy coating. <laughs> I do right. like the colors, though. Send um, us out. The colors are cool. This one, however, is is white. But yeah. There are more exciting colors than that out there. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's let's uh, let's call it a day. The 359 is available on iTunes, TuneIn, FeedBurner, Stitcher, Google Play Music, Google Podcast, the Amazon Echo, and of course, Sinet.com. Uh, Scott, thank you so much for coming on. Always a pleasure. And thanks. thanks, everybody, for your questions. We'll see you again tomorrow. Bye-bye.